Secret Friends Unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 466. This is your guide to the geek side, and I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra, joined by the churlish Charlie Carden. Execute Order 66. Thanks. I'll take my Oscar now for my Ian McDermott impersonation. Good afternoon, friends. How are you? I believe 466 is the combo of cheese. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Oh, so if they would have added combo, if they would have added cheese to uh, Order 66, what would that have sounded like? Would the clones have just like fired cheese at the clones and maybe, or the Jedi and maybe only the ones who are lactose intolerant would have suffered, the others would have lived? How would that have shaped galactic events differently i don't know I, I maybe that know. was to start up a new franchise like a um like a burger franchise like in and oh, out there you or go. maybe star Jet- burgers jedi burger good jedi burger and they could have keenan and kel in there as well uh that would have been fantastic but yes we are here we are resolute to talk about delightful thing and uh yeah but first and foremost before we do anything else, I know, isn't that great? Uh, we'd like to pay homage to our, the delightful people on our Secret Friends Unite Patreon squad over at patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite. Now with no ads on now on YouTube podcasts. Is that, is that, is that what you meant to say by that? Is YT YouTube or is that, is that like the young and the Correct. It is. So it. you get <laughs> no ads if you're a Patreon, but our show is also now on YouTube podcasts. Oh, that's right. I remember. But anyway, what we do like to do in regards to the Patreon is uh, pay homage to these wonderful folks who make it possible for us to do what we do. Todd and I have a great uh, comic book related show called Spinner Rack, of which I've been absent, but we're coming back with something new at you next week. Uh, and then I've got a great show called The Tax Geek Life, where I'm joined by a guest. We uh, break down a season of a classic show, a couple of episodes, and have a rocking good time. You can try the programs out for free for seven days by once again visiting patreon.com slash secret friends unite but over on our friends with benefits tier john sedorf the phoenix sisters cosplay brendan myers Corey in hd and longtime friend of the show matthew keel are supporting us over there on the bffs tier we have the awesome nias family of the twin Cities, sean stella and henry and friend of the show missy merchant so thank you all and thank you all who subscribe again please visit Patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite. Try us out for seven days. And if you like what you hear, stick around. St- oh, like that, like Arnie with the big knife. Thunk. Stick around. Stick around. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we do have, we are doing a little something with a show I previously l- launched called Fansplaining. We also had the personnel file. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're essentially repositioning that into yes. a show called Spotlight, where it's essentially Spotlight. either interviews or a specific franchise or something um it's basically a spotlight on those things so um we did one with the folks from the uncanny experience which is a big x-men experience that was on patreon i just put that out to share broadly great interview with that team a lot of fun and um we are hoping to do more of those interviews and special uh segment shows in the future i've got a couple in my mind that i look i'm planning to do So this should be a lot of fun. He's got it in his mind. Oh, but what I've got on my mind is the uh, timelessness of this week's cover. Uh, July of 1992. Oh, the summer of 92. I remember I had my first job. My first job, I worked at a water park that no longer exists here in the Grand Rapids area called Splash. They were a client. My mom sold advertisements was a client of hers. And uh, I was on maintenance. I plunged toilets for a summer. Talk about keeping it real. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, uh, yeah let's see 92 that would have been the the last that would have been my junior summer yeah uh, yep, yep. i was probably working at the iga in metamora uh nice. I, I, uh, you could say the iga stood for many things i won't say what i always said um but that it stood for but yeah great time uh doing probably going to a lot of concerts that summer uh having fun driving a uh Probably that one was the Cutlass Sierra. That was a piece of crap. Ooh, that was Hold before. That was before the Tato. As for the it was Geo. before the Tato. Yeah, yeah. That car wow. gas tank leaked, and I remember um, <laughs> I told Gabe Vario, "Hey, listen to my car. Uh, it purrs like a kitten." 
<laughs> revved oh, it up oh. and it died. <laughs> <laughs> so it became the kitten. It purse like a dead kitten. Remember my, exactly. uh, and this wasn't then, but speaking of car stories, you were there for this one. The second, the first car I ever paid my own money for was that uh, Volkswagen GT, <clears throat> the silver one that the gas tank backed up. And so the gas, yes. don't you remember the gas, the gas, the gas leaked out the gas cap. Oh, good times early cars. But anyway, back in 1992, issue 66 of DC Comics uh current ongoing Flash series starts off with uh above above the Flash is above the slash. The race you demanded, Flash versus Aquaman and you see uh Flash himself uh with a bubble beneath that says warning, this scene does not appear in this issue. Well, that's that's really kind of uh kind of, you know, counterintuitive to do that. But anyway, you have uh Flash uh, st- with his uh, ready to start running, standing on a start line, and to his side is Aquaman in his classic outfit, but with a mullet, with his arms crossed in a buffalo stance, saying "dot dot dot," not. So, if anyone who lived back in the day remembers that in the summer of 1992, we were treated to the smash hit film Wayne's World adopted from the wildly popular sketch on Saturday Night Live, for which one of their many catchphrases was to say something facetious and then end it with the expression, not. So oh, yeah, that's great. That's what great. a capsule in time. And again, written by Mark Wade, who is otherwise a fantastic creator, but uh, he did not pen this cover, I'm assuming. <laughs> No, no, it would have been, uh, I think, Tom Collins, I believe. Ooh, a Tom Collins. Sounds yeah, great. So Tom what, Collins. What, what's in the Tom Collins again? It's, it's vodka, right? I, I'm assuming gin and something else. Oh, I just yeah. I stay away from gin. That's not happening. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, Flash, the whole thing about the Flash is everyone wants to race him because, you know, he's the fastest man alive and he's raced everybody that's, you know, fast. And this one, it's Aquaman, of course. So that's why it's kind of funny. The race you demanded not so I, there we go yeah I, I read one of these quick sidebar i read one of these clickbait articles that were like things and cartoons that you didn't pick up on as kids and it was from the justice league unlimited that one from the early 2000s and the flash says blah 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 blah, blah. he's standing next to i believe it is hot girl and he's like but i'm the fastest man alive and her reply is that must be why you don't get many dates oh oh yeah, yeah. Ouch, so mark painful. wade did a great run on the flash it's probably the most notable run of Flash, because I don't think yeah, there was a great 90s. creative team on, yeah. on Flash, but Mark Wade really brought Flash back into prominence, really introduced you know, back, the, the Rogues Gallery became a thing, Ooh. and yeah, it was really cool, great. Uh, he also then teamed up with Mark Waringo. Um, Ringo? Uh, Ringo? Yeah. Jo- John Paul George Ringo? No, uh, Waringo, uh, Mike Waringo, sorry. Yes, yes, and yes. he passed away, but he was a great artist, too, on the Flash, so... Yeah. Um, Nice. Yeah, great. You know, this was this was before we got zero hour where we got another like the crisis became a regular occurrence. So this is really like DC kind of figuring they probably needed to, you know, move these characters in a new direction. So it's pretty much I have some stability. Rinse and uh, repeat at the time. I totally DC. get it. Well, speaking of rinse and repeat, uh, that would be the segue I'm going to use where I th- pay more homage to our senior news correspondent, the gal who's been with us damn near from the start, but was around a whole lot longer than that at 124 years young, down at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. That would be Madam Webb. She's got our latest news and scoops. So let's go for it. Now it's time for Madam Webb's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Webb. Oh, my goodness. March Madness is upon us. We're going to have uh, Michigan State's vying to get into the tournament. And, Madam Webb, you are called upon uh, to give your sports knowledge and your inter- uh, interpretation of basketball. Uh, so get your uniform ready. The peach basket is up. And if they are ready and Michigan State needs a new player, they will call you in because I think you're still eligible because you only did three years at Michigan State and then you decided to um, go did, overseas. Yeah, that's when she joined the Merchant Marine, right? Or the WAX. One of the two. Probably both. <clears throat> Double duty. It's wild. Correct. Um, well, speaking of wild, and we were talking about this in the pre-roll, we have a trailer finally for the uh, the summer release of the reboot of The Crow, which was a film uh, famously mired in controversy uh, because of the death of the star, uh, the accidental death of the star during the production of the film, and something that we discussed on a segment probably almost two years ago, the uh, Does It Hold Up? Because the original film came out, it was an indie film that came out in the... 
uh, mid-1990s, 1994, uh, was set in my hometown of Detroit, Michigan, though I'm sure filmed in, it was, where's somewhere else disgusting, Philadelphia, probably. <laughs> the, uh, and yeah, so we, we, yeah, yeah but, oh God, we started watching The Wire this week. Holy crap. Yikes. And you know, that was 20 years ago. What does it look like now? I don't know. I'm sure, you know what, if you live in Baltimore and I'm putting down your hometown, I apologize. Feel free to hit me up on thread. C3. I mean, crack more. Yeah. <laughs> or, or you can hit Todd up since he's being even more rude about it. Um, so anyway, Todd impressions, you, we, we talked in the B roll. You said, Hey, you know, I think the crow is fine. The old one for where it came from. Um, but now they're, you know, they're, they're swinging in the same lens. Obviously they've got the same concept. Uh, you have a guy who watches his girlfriend get murdered and he dies as well. And then he's, you know, necromanced up into this you know super killer and yada 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 and he's going for a rent so on and so forth and this trailer seems to go uh to illustrate those elements of it but then again kind of maybe some other stuff as well so take it away yeah so a little primer on this yeah the movie's uh 30 years old um alex price directed it a very famous soundtrack kind of blended together and alex price was a mu- movie uh, music director a music video director sorry yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and so a lot of it felt like a music video and that's right. the way it was very low cg so essentially you got a lot of like fisticuffs and stuff like that uh and a lot of mood uh the way it was mm-hmm. very 90s early 90s film uh i really enjoyed it um i i Still think it's for its time because of the low CGI and things like that. Not too yeah. bad. Uh, yeah. It's based on a series of comic books uh, called there you go. The Crow by James I'm... O'Barr. And the oh, whole boy. thing is the crow isn't just one person. The crow is essentially what takes spirits to heaven. And the crow essentially uh, gives people who have unfinished work uh, or have been wronged or something like that a second chance and they come back uh to right the wrong so uh the first one so so it's like a noir quantum leap but with guns kind of yeah yeah it's kind of like a mythology in a way and and the whole thing about the crow is uh you're essentially immortal you can't die you can take tons of bullets as long as a crow the actual uh crow who is uh, following the main character around doesn't die so oh, essentially well, somebody could be like hey todd i'm gonna get you Pew, shoot the crow exactly and then drop exactly wow. so that is that is a dangerous uh vulnerability that uh you wouldn't want people to know about because you wouldn't get more than five feet you're telling anybody hey by the way don't kill my crow don't, don't don't look at that crow he's just he's gonna hang back there he's smoking a cigarette exactly just <laughs> Hey, I'm Superman. Uh, please don't bring kryptonite around me. I, yeah, I don't exactly. think he's dropping that anytime. Yeah, yeah. So that's, um, a, that's a bad vulnerability, no doubt. Ooh. Yeah. So there's been uh, three other Crow films since the original: uh, Crow City of Angels, The Crow Salvation, and Crow Wicked Prayer, with different people in them. Uh, right. So this isn't the first time, but uh, essentially they are now rebooting, remaking the right. original book with Eric Draven as the main character, his girlfriend. Uh, and we're getting um, Bill Skarsgård playing that role. Skarsgård! FKA, FKA uh, Twigs playing his girlfriend who dies in this. Um, Rupert Sanders is the director. Quite honestly, you would not be excited about any of the projects he's produced or directed. Oh, yeah, well, let's have it. Give us a couple. Um, I believe... Um, Let's see. I have to look it up really quick, uh, unless you want to do that. Uh, no, it's not in this article. No, it's not in this article. They oh, probably okay. made sure not to include it because you'd probably like buy <laughs> him. Uh, uh, not a great, I would say, just not a great director. Um, right. And uh, we also have uh, the person that stood out in this film really got me interested in was um, Danny Houston. Danny oh, Houston like played the yeah, like striker. Uh, yeah. He also played, you know, a really great vampire in 30 days a night. He's, he, yeah. I really like him. So the cast to me is solid in this. The sad point is I even, just don't think even, this is going even to be very notable. FKA twigs. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, yeah I FKA watched the trailer twigs. and again, uh, I watched, yeah. I watched, yeah. I watch, yeah, I watched it just now, and again, I, I would love to know more about FKA Twigs and what the hell is that supposed to mean. But you know what, we're just we're well, gonna, she's we're a gonna she's a that. she's a yeah. music musician and things like that. Um, oh, there we apparently go. she was um, dating. And again, um, what's his name? Uh, the the guy was in Transformers. Bad, uh, the young uh, guy, I can't remember his Mark, name. Marky Mark. 
<laughs> oh no! Uh, uh, which Transformers? <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. She was dating Shia LaBeouf, and oh. Shia LaBeouf kind of went a little. Oh really? Together. So yeah. Oh yeah. Oh well. That uh, but he, that, uh, that, that uh, Rupert, tracks. Rupert Sanders directed Snow White and the Huntsman, that movie with Chris uh, Chris Hemsworth and uh, Kirsten Stewart. Then he did Ghost in the Shell, which uh, you know got a lot of outcry because they basically whitewashed the role uh, to put Charlize their lo- their own in that. I believe that she was the the main yeah, actress right. in that, and then corrupt. So well, he hasn't done a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know, Skarsgård is that he's obviously he was Pennywise the Clown in the It films, and he's done a lot of really. Uh, he did Hemlock Grove, which was on Netflix. That was a show we enjoyed. Um, but yeah, this trailer makes us look like complete trash. I'm sorry, I'm I I, I can't I can't, I can't pick a defensible position. It just again. I'm with you, you know, when that original came out, you know, it was when we were in high school, college, and it was very edgy and it was very topical and uh, was cut like a music video. And this seems to have a lot of that same sensibilities with the music and the quick cuts. But even, I mean, it was a Red Band trailer we watched, so it was violent. Guy gets his head blown off by a shotgun. That's delightful. That's just not something I'm dying to see, no pun intended. Um, but yeah, the cuts of it just look ridiculous. And he, you know, uh, he basically, he looks like machine gun kelly or who's the guy with all the sh- uh, post malone the guy with all the tattoos on his face um mm-hmm. maybe that really works for gen z maybe this can be a gen z hit i have no idea this comes out june 7th yeah, less goth a little bit more of that uh, a little uh, bit street. more gross yeah. Uh, yeah i mean it's but it's it's a thing of today versus goth was a thing of then at that time right. so yeah, it's reflecting yeah. kind of like modern time sensibilities it's not for everybody we're Mixed, old charlie yeah. so we have no I know. we have no like why doesn't that young man cut his hair because who's gonna hire him <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I, I stand pretty firmly on people with tattoos on their face as far as it being a liability for the hiring employment process. But you know what? That's just me. I'm sorry. Mistakes are made. Mistakes are made. Yeah. Mistakes uh, you are know, made. this movie, I would say it, it, it. I think the biggest thing will be it looks very generic. It doesn't invoke any like exciting tone. It doesn't right. feel like this guy really the director has that. He seems like more of a shooter than he yeah. does a, no, yeah, uh, no a visionary. Yeah, he so, does a vision board. Um, so again, I predict this. this I predict yeah. this to be very mediocre, not horrible. Yeah. Like, oh my god, you know, you see the scaffolding in the background and the camera. Yeah. I, I think it'll be mediocre. Right, That's probably the best way it is. You know, June seventh. So, Todd, this will this this comes out during the time frame of our summer movie wager, which we're going to have to start focusing on the wager that you, John, and I have done since 2016. I don't think that this will be a factor. Because I are the Gen Z oh, kids no. gonna really gonna crank out to see this one? I don't, yeah, I think this is w- without a doubt fifty to sixty range, probably tops. As yeah, far I have as no clue how much this is gonna cost to make either. And yeah. I, I, there's no notable stars in this. I mean, yeah, uh, there's the B tier people. So yeah, yeah. I, I think this one is what it is, and yep. will probably pass without anybody remembering it actually even happened. Correct, Amundo. All right, moving on. You got kind of a one-two punch. Now we're going to be talking about the X-Men a little bit later as we get into the Thunderdome. But uh, uh, you've got some X-Men comic news. Now, Todd, I know you've had your struggles in the last three or four years with the the X-Men stuff and the Krakoa storyline and the this and the the, the what the hell was the ball the the, the I was going to say the Hellgate ball the Hellfire it was the Hellfire Hellfire Gala Gala yeah. there you go so uh, where do you land with all sex men stuff are you reading right now or before we get into this like where are you at not really I mean I I, I like the premise of basically the X Men went through a, X Men throughout time have gone through like eras with different creators they've done like, that's part of like, their thing yeah right like Spider Man yeah. or like any heritage anything well yeah. I mean they they completely bring in new mutants they do all these different things they have like some that changes the status quo right. big time. Uh, and because the x are a team, it's it's very hard to self-contain it and everybody has their own favorite X-Men. So it's a little bit different. So X-Men did the Krakoa, which was a a huge change in strategy. Hey, yes, says. bigly. Krakoa, Krakoa was the, the living mutant island. And essentially right. it allowed, the premise was it allowed Professor Xavier to catalog every mutant's uh, brain waves and their right. consciousness in Krakow was able to then uh, essentially clone every mutant. So right. mutants couldn't die anymore. So right. it was like, this is crazy. As long and as they, they, they made it back to base when they were crippled or whatever, they could just be nope, like, Nope, Nope. They oh, didn't have so, to even come so back. They, you would just plug in before you like, I'm going on a mission. So I'm going to, I'm going to do my thumb scan and then it'll well, update me. And 
Well, yeah, like wireless Professor Wi-Fi. Xavier was consistently scanning all of them to get the most recent version of their psyche and things like that. Krakoa well, would grow yeah. that, and they had genetic material, they would grow it. And then, so that was a thing where essentially sure. they became almost like gods among us because they can't die. So that's right. became a weird oh, thing. Right. Krakoa was their own nation. They, they all live there. To, yep. They went to a new planet, actually, and seeded the planet like Project Genesis. So oh, I think God. it was Mars. And then there was a race of like uh, and they aliens their- that were hidden on the planet. So Holy yeah, it was crazy. Boy. Like I said, Charlie, this was a this was like a weird status quo change. That's, that's you a had big like change. The, yeah, you had the Council of Mutants who basically decided what would happen. Like you had like Mister Sinister on it, like like Magneto, so wow. enemies and friends. So it was definitely a weird take, and it was creating a lot of tension between mutants and humans because yeah. you know where were they at and they, the mutants wanted a seat at the table uh in ruling and being treated like a, a an entity in a nation which they've always wanted to be treated fairly so that's right. where we're at with it and right. because wow. of that there's some there's some things behind the scenes which made it not as nice as it you you thought it was and it's all coming to a head we knew this was going to happen something was going on with savior uh like he wasn't on the up and up he's been wearing this helmet and, right. The yeah. Helmet. So we're now getting the essentially the next phase of X Men. It's called. Uh, it's basically from the ashes. Um, we're getting this um, a new which, beginning. It's good. Which I, which obviously paints a picture that everything came. Everything went to shit, and they just they're starting over. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Correct. Got this it, is going to happen this summer. It's going to be a big event. It's going to kick off with titles. There was a uh, a nice comic book trailer, which I always like. Where basically it's motion yeah. comics. Yeah, yeah. Which I you know I'm not. I, I'm kind of. Uh, it gets the point across. I just, I yes. find them, I find them kind of annoying, but I thought that this was cool. So this comic trailer was uh, Jubilee was the featured character and it was maybe 60 seconds. And she's like, and it says after the fall of everything and she's standing outside, you know, the X-Men compound and it's all locked down the security run around and she wanders off into the you know real world. And you see, she's, you know, taking a job washing dishes and I like the, 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 the little symbol. So boom, you yeah. make this symbol to somebody else. Yeah. It Which, means, yeah. and, and it even, it illustrates, the, so sh- this dishwasher, well, she's sitting eating in a diner. Yeah, me and Charlie are, are flashing gang sin- signals, uh, symbols, unless well, you're see, watching this. M, like, yes. it's, it's Spider-Man's thing, but it's like this. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That, mean, that means mutant. Um, yeah, so that's so, cool. So yeah, so mutants are now back to being a subculture and still worked into, obviously, so this, you know, take place in America, whatever it is. So that's interesting. So now there are three core titles. There's uh, Uncanny. Uh, there's X-Men. adjective lists and then there's exceptional X-Men, which is new, I think. In it, your- it is. Yeah. That's yeah. a new title. And that's going to be, so each one of these has a little bit of a different flavor and different team, right. which is, which is cool because then it's like you right. pick your favorite team and you go along with it. So yeah. they, the X-Men book is kind of a weird one because it's mixing Cyclops, Beast, Magneto, Psylocke, Kid Omega, Temper, uh, Magic, and Juggernaut. Oh, jugger- is, yeah. Juggernaut and Juggernaut. This kind of reminds me of yeah. Uncanny x-force and oh, they're right, okay. more like hardcore uh then we have the uncanny x-men which is kind of like the 90 x-men 97 team yeah yeah it's um, exactly that yeah pretty much except which is uh days, rogue yeah. gambit nightcrawler jubilee and wolverine and rogue is leading that team oh, gotcha. and then exceptional is essentially new mutants it's going to have oh, uh emma go. frost and kitty pride essentially raising the next generation of mutants okay uh, to come yeah, through. Yeah. Yeah, is that Wolvesbane in there as well? I'm just I'm just looking at the picture. Uh, that is going to have. How do they even list who all the students is? Oh no no no! Oh, yeah. oh here is uh, Bronze Axo Melee. Uh, oh so yeah, new, new characters. Good. Well, new well, characters. New to me anyway. They might not be new. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. cool. Okay, so you know the real the real jam of this. Obviously, we got the news out. Those are all the particulars. Is this bringing Todd Oxra back to reading a book? I think so, because I've always said, what's a good point to get in? And I want a good book. So what yeah. I'll probably do is pick up all three yeah. of the, of the uh, you know, just the first title and see what gets me. If I like the, the writing or the art, Gail mm-hmm. Simone is writing Uncanny. And I, I think Gail Simone's a fantastic, they've got good, uh, good uh, creators yeah. on this. So I think that's the good note. Yeah, yeah. And, and, unc- and Uncanny is going to be your more traditional uh, line up with Wolverine yep. and Rogue and all that stuff. So, well, cool. Well, uh, yeah, so you'll buy, well, you know, potentially you pick that up. Perhaps we'll break the first issue down together. You share it with me and I can. 
yeah. uh, do that as well. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Well, good deal. There is, um, there's going to be six other books that are going to launch later. So, But these look to be different because we've got X Factor, which is a heritage book. You know, uh-huh. that was the first official spinoff of X-Men. Well, third because New Mutants. But X Factor yeah. was a fun team of the, like, almost like the original X-Men. We have X-Force, yeah. which was Cable's team that came out oh, of New gotcha. Mutants. Uh, right. NYX was kind of a cool street wise book dun, that dun, brought out. Do, um, do, do, do. Do do do, bam, boodly, bam. Isn't that wasn't that? Yeah, song? so that was kind of a, a neat kind of a down, uh, you know, street level mutant book that was kind of neat. Finding mutants that were kind of there. Uh, Phoenix, which could be Jean Grey, could be uh, Rachel Summers. Uh, Storm, which I don't think Storm's ever had an ongoing solo book. She's had uh, mini series, and then Wolverine has always yeah. had his own book. So that'll be it. So oh, these aren't too yes, bad, yes. and you just pick up the book you want and enjoy those. But I want to find a core so, book. I can keep yeah. up with. So you probably probably read each of the number ones and then pick. Is that your yeah, plan? Yeah, see what appeals to excited? me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. I'll give it a shot. Well, cool. That's uh, I like that. So, all right, moving on. Uh, and I feel like we talked about this a while back, but now we have gameplay uh, for G.I. Joe, The Wrath of Cobra. Uh, which is stylized off of your very classic 1980s G.I. Joe cartoon. I have, and I'm looking right at it, but I can't get up and pick it up. But I just today, my friend Derek, who's he's my hookup at Hasbro Pulse because he's got their Prime membership. So if, whenever they have an exclusive item, so I don't have to pay shipping, I just have him buy it for me. Uh, but he brought by the Vamp, which I just, I dropped a picture of it in, on our Discord in our co- uh, collectibles thread. Um, absolutely beautiful toy. Um, so which the Vamp was one of their original vehicles vehicles um so i was pretty psyched about that but yeah this gameplay looks looks wild now is this is well this is a pc game i'm like please let me be able to play this on my phone it's gonna be on (laughs) it's gonna be on consoles i don't know uh i'd have to look to see if it's coming to ps4 or not for you charlie but um it will be online too, so we could, we could oh, if it, okay. it's PS4 and PS5, we could play together online. Okay, it's okay. Basically, That'd a four player beat 'em up, kind of like the old Simpsons game. Oh, um, I love it. Yeah, I'm down yeah. with that. Um, yeah, and, I, you, and it was funny, I've actually turned my uh, PlayStation 4 back on recently because I uh, I hadn't played that uh, Lego Star Wars the Skywalker Saga in several in a couple of years and I thought oh, I'll go back and give it a stab I just finished it yesterday just playing through the story modes but I love that and but and I could find a way to love this because again even whoops okay stop sorry yeah. I pushed the button you okay and I- no, I just uh, apparently when I pushed it, it started playing and blasting my earballs out. But um, Good for you. yeah, I love it. Oh, this is actually dated on my birthday. So, let's go. Okay. I had to close it because it wouldn't stop, <laughs> wouldn't stop playing the audio. Um, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it from my memory. No, it looks great. I see, you know, classic characters from the, you know, the first five, you know, pr- kind of years of GI Joe, which is my sweet spot. The 82 through the 85 series is the series that I like. And that was very integral to the cartoon series and the mini series that ran it up. But yeah, I like the beat them up. The style looks very Sega Genesis, you know, like the, like the old Spider-Man games or, uh, that, that they had back in the day, you know, like, uh, uh, God, was the carn the uh, you know uh, uh, the carnage the, the Spider Man oh, yeah. carnage maximum yeah carnage. maximum yep. carnage my God ugh, right on the yep. tip of my tongue um, but yeah this is fantastic but yeah even the rundown so you know yeah your eighties you've got you know Duke Scarlet Roadblock and then you know Cobra Troopers and the Vipers and Crimson Guard so that actually gets into the eighty six series but uh, but basically when the when the core comic was on so I closed the window and don't want to open it again because I don't want it to blow my ears out when when does this drop. Uh, let's see. I believe it is it, right now. There's no firm, uh, release date. Ah! I'm guessing this will probably be a summer release. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really cool because they show some of the, the, some of the characters you fight are very iconic, like major blood, things like that. You can shoot or you can punch, which is fun. Um, and, uh, the other part that's kind of neat is, um, I like that they're just taking it back to the basics. There's been a couple GI Joe yeah. games, nothing really iconic that have been great, but this one seems to be like capture the flavor of what's really good about GI Joe from our age. Um, there was a recent Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles beat up. That was kind of like a new game, but kind of remind me of the old uh, arcade game. Yeah. Really good. It was called yeah. Shredder's Revenge. Yeah. So I'm hoping this is like this. And, you know, typically games like this, if they get very popular, the, Charlie, they'll bring out like an expansion pack like you see with Legos. Well, oh, it's new characters oh, like brought the, in. Maybe Zartan DLC. gets brought yeah. in or or. Yeah, maybe it's yeah. like, oh, it's Quick Kick and, you know, somebody else. Yeah. 
Quick kick, such a practical outfit. He wears a sash of throwing stars and a pair of black pants and nothing else. And a headband. They were <laughs> very practical for when you see him the first time. And then it, it was it was in, I think, the, the 85 miniseries. And it was him. And it was Quick Kick and Alpine who were buddies. And then they were in the Arctic. And then there was Quick Kick. And he was wearing exactly what I just described. Sounds very practical for an Arctic mission, wearing no shoes. Good play. It, it, I do find it interesting because Ripcord is one of the playable characters. And to me, he's like one of the most characters I know the least about because he really wasn't you know, a main Two things about Ripcord is number one, that was the Wayne's brothers character in the 2009 GI Joe movie. Oh, really? He was Ripcord. Mm. But Rip, Ripcord ended up being a somewhat pivotal character in Larry Hama's Marvel Comics run. He had it. He had his. He had his own storyline. It had to do with this girl he was da- dating. The girl turned out to be her dad was a Crimson Guardsman. But that's whole thing. Of about Crimson Guardsman is that you never know. And then yeah, it got tied into a whole storyline that had to do with Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow and Zartan. And he was the one who discovered because he he was uh, Zartan took him out like uh, and then switched their clothes. And so the Dreadnoughts took. Ripcord back to Springfield, then Ripcord escapes, calls the Joes, tells them where Springfield is. That's when Springfield got invaded. So his Ripcord was responsible for that. So he was a big he was a big deal in the comics. Is but yeah, under, is, is is Cobra headquarters under Most Tavern? Um yeah, yeah, it's under all yeah, all of Springfield. Bo's Cavern. Yes. Yeah. I, yes. And when when they finally caught Bart Simpson for making those prank calls, he was publicly executed. Oh, Fantastic. Bose Cavern, but anyway, yeah. So no release date on that. So well, when it does, we will play because I'm. I'm totally yeah, it should that. be around a, I think, thirty dollar game or less. Shouldn't be very expensive. I can handle it. All right, what's what's up with the Teen Titans? I haven't been keeping up. So Teen Titans are now going to be a live action movie coming from uh, the actual uh, writer of S- the Supergirl World of Tomorrow. Oh yeah, that was a book we read for the uh, Spinner Rack. Yeah. Yeah, no director yet, uh, but um, it, it'll be interesting because we just came off of Titans, which I loved, but it was kind of ham-fisted, trying to be yeah. heavy and dark, but still, you know, I liked the characters, I yeah. liked the storylines, I, I really enjoyed it, but it was definitely CW uh, plus, I guess is the best way to put it, because it was <laughs> R-rated, plus. essentially. CW, CW yeah. after there were, yeah, there were some, some, some nudie balloonies in there. Yeah. So well, this a lot is, of F- uh, effing the, and, you know, yeah. A lot, lot of effing and effing is what you, if, if, yes. flipping, flipping them and flipping <laughs> flop. Um, so this will be a live action film. So will this fall under the, my, my ad jammed. Thanks ad. Um, will this fall under the banner of the, uh, what James Gunn's got going on all. Yeah. But the gods it, and even, monsters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he's structuring some of his stuff to not all necessarily flow together. So I wonder, will this be part of like the Superman movie well, the that only we know is being not made? Part of it is going to be the Batman, uh, the Batman with Robert oh, uh, Pattinson. The Batman. The other thing. And then the Joker and then also as well. The Joker, yeah. That stuff is considered yeah. like okay. Elseworlds. And then this will right. all be part of the DCEU or the Gods and Monsters universe where everything is right. a world of DC. And, uh, uh, they can a either choose to connect or they don't have to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it yes. will be interesting to see what, what shape the Titans take with this because we've seen Cyborg, obviously. Uh, but we, and we have not, se- we've only seen most of the Titans actually in the Titans live action series. They've been in maybe Smallville right. or things like that. Characters showing up. But yeah, yeah. Uh, with this one, I don't know which team they'll go with. Will they go with the original one or they go more of the ones T Titans go with Beast Boy and yeah. Starfire and, right. and things like that. Yeah. Um, well, and also were, we are were, getting Robin. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I say those were um, what you described. I'm trying to, cause I know I've, I know I read particularly when Titans came out, I read that like first issue and your core team of Titans was, was largely what you described. It was like, it was, wasn't it like Robin and cyborg and was it Raven? And then it was, or did Raven come later? But no, Raven was part of that. If you think of like new teen Titans, yeah. the George press run, yeah, yeah, it was kind of that. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Um, of. Yeah. I mean, the original Titans, though, if you go back to like when they first came out, like in the 50s or early oh, 60s, there you go. Detroit was essentially Wonder Woman's uh, sidekick. Oh, you you had Kid right. Flash, which was, you know, a young version of Flash. You had um, Speedy, which was, you know, Green Green Arrow's sidekick. You had Aqualad. Right. So, yeah, yeah, that was with, the or, without, with or without heroin. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you have the new Teen Titans. So I, I don't know which way they'll go, but we do know we're getting yeah. a Robin in the uh, the Brave and the Bold, um, yeah. which is kind of cool. So I don't know if that, yeah. I mean, that would be kind of neat that we have, you know, Br- Robin have leading his own team, or it might be an older Robin, maybe, like uh, yeah. Nightwing versus, um, because I think Brave and the Bold is actually going to have a Damien. So it would yeah. make sense to have Dick Grayson an older Robin introduced and then Damien. Not as even well. Nightwing fun. Nightwing in his yeah. jazzy seventies outfit with the oh, big, I love uh, it. oh, I love it's it. good stuff. Yeah. All those Disco stuff. collar. We're, yeah, we're, exactly. We're kicking. Yeah. I was going to say what a, what a, what a bitch it is to take that to the dry cleaners. I'm yeah. sure. So we're seeing oh, a lot right. of stuff in movies that, yeah. you know, we've been wanting to see. So this is really good. James Gunn is just pulling everything and say, Hey, we're going to have fun. Yeah, that's good because isn't the movie supposed to be entertaining, not just glum and and boring and all Snydery? <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Well, this next thing that you pulled out now, this is not something I've heard about. So Seth Rogen uh, produced an adaptation of Eight Billion Genies for Amazon MGM. Now, what is Eight Billion Genies? I've never heard of it. Yeah, so it's a comic book. Actually, Mark Mark talked about this one that he he picked this one up. It's a really cool premise. Uh, Charles Sewell and Soul and Ryan Brown are the creators of Eight Billion Genies, which is an eight issue limited series that Image published in 2022. Really? Essentially, the story summary is: If you had one wish, what would you wish for? Now, what if everyone else had one wish too? That's Eight Billion Genies at exactly the same moment. Everyone on Earth gets a genie and one wish. All hell breaks uh-huh. loose in a very entertaining way, and that's just the beginning. Buckle in for the wildest ride of your life. So oh, this could be a lot that, of fun. That sounds nuts. And yeah, you could go a lot of different directions with this. This could be like, oh, everybody wish, you know, all, you know, 40% of people wish for world peace. And then, you know, 40, the other, you know, 60% of people, everybody wish for a million dollars. And, you know, if everybody has a million dollars, then, you know, the World Bank. Collects. You don't really have any money. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh, that sounds wild. So. Nobody works. Oh, wait, they Nobody have to work. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, so Amazon has had the rights to this for a couple of years, and now Seth uh, Rogen is going to be producing it. So I don't necessarily know that that means this is going to be a comedy of some kind because he's done serious work as well. Yeah, The Boys is not a comedy. I mean, it's kind yeah. of sadder. It's, sad, it's black comedy, I guess, the best way to say that's it. Right. Yeah, that's right, because he's tie- he's really tied in with that as well. So, yeah. Um, and, yeah, it says... Uh, oh, yeah, this is good news. Uh, Rodney in, Rothman... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Co-writing this Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. So he wrote that. So that's good yeah, news too. Be doing the scripting, so it won't be low. So well, that's cool. Uh, so this is going into production. You know, couple couple three years from now, we'll be seeing this. And when it says Amazon Studios, this is a program or a oh no, it's to be a film. Okay, film. Ab- ab- Since so it's a film, and MGM yeah. still produce you know puts movies yeah. out in the theater. So maybe Amazon will get wow. to that game where it'll be in theaters first, and then they'll come to Prime, so we can pay for ads. Right. Oh, I love. Well, you know what? What? Whatever makes the wheel go round. And speaking of things that make the wheels go round, as we find our way out of the news, it's this great word from our sponsor. Hey, Secret Friends Unite! Let me tell you about ZenCaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. ZenCaster is now the all-in-one solution, making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content, all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So if you're interested in making an easy, high-quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, 
Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. We're sitting in the Geek Easy cover band's plan. Drinks are poured and we are ready to get our nerd on. So, in the world of nerd, it's kind of a down week. Not a lot of stuff going on. Not a lot of big movies this week. Mm -hmm. Um, Not a lot of big TV. They were kind of in the middle of everything. So, at this point, um, I did check in on Invincible Season 2. It's back. Oh, okay. Um, Yeah, it's the second half of Season 2. They've dropped one new episode, so I watched that. Episode 5. It's... uh, it's kind of cool the way they broke up the season because um, we are left with our hero pretty much at his nader. Uh, and he's he uh, essentially I don't want to spoil too much for people back in. But essentially, um, it doesn't get better for Mark. <laughs> it seems like he just cannot catch a break. I mean, he goes from heartache to, you know, uh, things are not going good. He finds out he essentially has a sibling uh, by his dad that he, uh, you know, is kind of a surprise to him because he's got a really tenuous relationship with his dad, to say the least. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's what's going on. He's he's kind of reunited with the team, and it's still not going well. <laughs> they, oh every time they think they they things are going to, you know, turn a new leaf for the team, things go wrong. So it's if you like Invincible, I think you'll be very happy because I think – the way they're they're telling more about the team members and they're adding depth, it's really cool. Yeah, uh, totally approve of this. So if you if you've you're behind, go in check it out. The episodes are about forty minutes each, and they always have a stinger after the the credits. Yeah. So um, end credits. So always check them out. Um, and definitely enjoy that. Uh, but this led me to watch uh, a one shot that they put out. It was called uh, Adam Eve. So oh. it was really a, a one episode story that had been released i think last year i never watched it but i went and watched now basically it's her origin story and it's all about her and how she came to be and it's giving her backdrop so i like this because it's giving you something but it doesn't have to be a whole series it's just a one shot one episode about a character and you can check it out if you want or you can totally ignore it i like that i would like to see them do that for every character because i think it would be a lot of they had a lot of layers to these characters and i think it would give them and they could even do villains too they could do that kind of a, now, be a fun one shot the two of these are, are connected i assume because i'm not i don't i don't know who adam yeah adam eve is, is one of the characters is the of character. the team. Yeah, so yeah. but this is spun off of a comic so is this adapting material from the comic or, or don't you know it might be. It might have been yeah. covered in the comic, or there might oh, have been gotcha, a one shot okay. as well. Uh, but yeah, it's all part of the Invincible universe, and right. I think it's kind of cool that Amazon has been doing these because um, we've had the we've had the boys. We had that one animated uh, series, which I oh. thought was interesting and fun. Yeah, I watched one or two of the the babies laser babies day out or yeah. whatever yeah it was just yeah. Not, yeah it was yeah we did watch a couple of those like holy cow these are really gruesome but uh, no that's awesome um but yeah what's important i would and again i've not really stuck with invincible i watched a bit mm-hmm. of it when, when we kicked it off but what's pivotal in, in like my question like oh did that adapt something from the comics that matters less and less because what they really you know their their purpose in adapting something is twofold obviously you want to snag some of that built-in audience but you want to create something that if there's buzz because it's good you'll pick up people who don't read comics at all so you'll get somebody who so anything in this adam eve special will be new to them regardless where you'll have that limited group to be like yeah you know that's not really what happened because really was you know you're going to get that crowd but moreover than not the vast majority you're going to get people obviously who are not much like Halo, which we finally started watching again. Um, you know, the first season, a lot of people were like, well, that's not, and Master Chief wouldn't take off his helmet and you wouldn't see his button. Da, 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 da. Where I thought the show. And yeah, a lot of sex in the video game either. Yeah. A lot- <laughs> Oh, video game sex. Not interested. Um, but, you know, just for somebody watching the show, you're like, oh, this is a cool show because there's a lot of action and blah, blah, and the storyline seems interesting. That's really what they need, not somebody who is like, um, you know, well, this is not exactly the same as this thing and that thing where 
the last of us for example we finally watched all those cutscenes, and that is very very similar to what you see in the show though they flesh absolutely it out. It's, yeah it's, it's more of a, a a direct adaptation with some caveats that play with the medium yeah. Yeah, i yeah. would say invincible is very similar to that it, it yeah. takes the core tenants but it's like yep you feel like it's it's doing what the medium does best and telling right. uh, different story beats maybe blowing some things up reducing right. some things whereas i feel like halo just said it's completely different it's master chief and yeah there's some story beats but it's essentially not at all like it so and here um, and, and here's his butt enjoy yeah so it <laughs> i mean it does feel like well maybe we can capture some people we yeah. can get some other people hey it's a video game where he spends most time shooting and killing it doesn't speak a lot is that right. a great thing for people to watch probably not so we'll yep. do some fillers and not so create some new characters you so. gotta get you gotta Got to give him an, an apartment and a dog and maybe a, a wacky neighbor or maybe he doesn't get along with his dad. Yeah, I don't know, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Exactly. You know, they got to dress up as women so they can live in an apartment. Uh, oh, yes. Bo- like bosom, bosom buddies. Bosom buddies halo. I love it. All exactly. right. Well, um, I touched upon very briefly uh, that we started watching the latest show in the Walking Dead Averse, which is the, the Ones Who Live. This is the conclusion of the now, you know, 10 years within the time frame uh, of when Rick Grimes, who was our driving character in the show, when he was written out uh, for lack of a better term, he kind of disappeared in the bridge explosion and he washed up on shore and trash, you know, trashed on Lady J just took him away to the CR, the CRM, the, the mystery shadow government that is uh, run by uh, Terry o, Michigan native Terry O'Quinn, as a matter of fact, the actor, um, you know, and those were the first couple of episodes, but we're on episode four right now. And uh, we're getting to a point where, you know, Rick and Michonne have broken loose and it looks, you know, they're, they're in a position where they can make a run for it and not necessarily have to go back to the CRM because the CRM does once they take you there, you're with them for good. And if you escape, you Wait, die. Are those the people they make Salesforce CRM. Yep, exactly. Very, very dangerous people. You know it as well as I do. Um, but this this fourth episode uh, had to do with them uh, debating. You know, Rick was told that if uh, if he runs with Michelle Michonne, that the CRM will send out a force to wipe out all of Alexandria, which is their home and where their children live. Uh, and in this most recent episode, uh, Michonne finally reveals when Rick doesn't want to leave, she finally reveals to him that he has a son that he didn't know about um, because in this previous episodes running up she hadn't brought it up um but there's just a lot of really phenomenal you know drama and and just a lot of really a, a great back and forth um you know the walking dead since it ended last year has had two spinoffs which i kind of sat through but was not super enthusiastic about like the 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 one in new york the dead city with uh with uh negan and maggie eh. um you know the one with daryl in france Eh, I mean, I thought it was like okie doke. This, you know, cuts to the heart of the show, Rick being the main character and anybody who read the comics. And again, just kind of talking about comics versus show, you know, and how they really expand things out. This doesn't touch anything that ever happened in any of the comics because this was not the arc that that happened with either one of these characters. But I think it's really it's 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 the franchise, some of the franchise's best stuff up to including those last somewhat forgettable years of the original show. So I'm really loving it again. Episode four dropped uh, today, which is Sunday. So there's two weeks left. Um, and, uh, I won't spoil anything. Please tune in again. These things are available on AMC plus, which we get through Amazon prime, which is the same thing you can do if you're watching Todd's invincible. So it, it, we're, we're kind of the Amazon prime plug this week. Uh, cause that's where you can get that at, but yeah, no, I've really enjoyed it. Todd, have you watched the first episode? Have you tuned in? Not yet. Um, I I'm okay with waiting until it wraps up. Fair, um, especially with two weeks left. Yeah, because uh, I have quite honestly, the show is like I don't hear any, many people talking about it, so it's not like it's yeah, going to be spoiler, 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 spoiler. Right. Um, I am curious if this does well. Is this just going to be then? Oh, we're getting more seasons of this, or is this truly like it's telling its story and it's done? Right. Um, Which is where like, are, we gonna, it, are we gonna are we gonna we, get the blood out of a rock? You know. Yeah, or out of the out of the Walker's gnarly rag, which is funny because there are now because the only time we turn on Prime, there's promos before it, uh, and uh, Daryl, the Daryl Dixon show, is getting a second season called The Book of Carol. So Carol is back, which she was famously not in the first season of that because uh, actress Melissa McBride couldn't Band in travel, Paris couldn't travel outside of the country, so she couldn't travel and uh, and film uh, film with uh, film and. and uh, 
France where they shot it. So, uh, but yeah, so that's one that they're they're squeezing the story on. So yeah, we'll only know when they wrap it up if they're you know if they've done a start your engines that you're like we're going to keep the franchise going, get ready, elongate. It always makes everything better. Yeah, Just exactly. Going until Just you run out of stories, keep squeezing. It's worked for every single show that's ever existed. Uh, and then secondly, we did go to the the cinemas as we frequently do, and I've been seeing trailers for this one for a while. Uh, the American Society of Magical Negroes. Have you seen trailers for this one? I have. Know? Yeah, I've seen yeah. some reaction to it as well. Now, yeah, we've seen, we got Justice Smith in this one, and he genre wise, he was in. I'm gonna say the Pokemon movie. I'm trying to remember what, and he's been in yep, the Jurassic he was in World. Pokemon. He's yeah. been in a couple of video games. Yeah, um, yeah, I like him. He's like a black actor. And I, yeah, yeah, he's like a black actor. He's you know late, late, uh, late twenties. He's mixed race, which is obviously that plays a part of this film. But uh, and and then uh, Detroit native David Allen Greer, who we all as Gen Xers we all love him because he was part of In Living Color, which is a sketch show that was on Fox in the early nineties. Um, but it has to do with uh, he is kind of a down on his luck. Uh, performance artist who deals in yarn. You have to see the movie to understand what that means. Um, but he gets approached by David Allen Greer, who says, hey, I've got a job for you, and uh, whisks him away. This is all comes from the trailer, so hopefully I'm not spoiling anything if you're have not, if you not familiar with it or want to see the movie. Uh, whisks him away to this secret Hogwarts-esque kind of magical thing where he's part of a society of black folk that help white people feel more comfortable um, by, by basically basically pumping them up. And so that becomes, you know, Justice Smith accepts the job and he gets assigned uh, to a social media outlet where he's got to pump up the ego of this, you know, uh, pretty uh, average white guy. And uh, he falls in love with a girl at the same firm uh, who the guy, the white guy decides that he wants. And if Justice Smith doesn't help him get the girl, all magical Negroes everywhere lose their powers. And again, this is all covered in the trailer. I thought it was great. There was an incredible monologue at the end where Justice Smith talks about the disparity of, you know, the black white gap, certainly here in America and probably the world at large. So phenomenally great film. Go see it. That's, that's oh, what that's I'm good leave. to hear. Yeah. That's what I'm going to leave you with. It, it was absolutely great. Uh, and okay. it did not make me, it made me feel the appropriate amount of uncomfortable as a white person. It made me feel the uncomfortableness I should feel as a white person. Correct, um, correct. yeah. And it was, but it was not heavy or violent or preachy in a way that, you know, it, it had a message, but it didn't feel preachy. Um, so yeah, um, go see this. Like I said, in theaters, I think it dropped this week. Um, go out there and support it, go out there and support it, go and support a film like this. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny because that whole phrase of magical Negroes is a concept in films. Yes. Um, and it's, that's exactly, they cover that? It, it starts with the, that is the opening title yeah. card. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah it's a, a black character that comes along to further the white character's journey. That's magical Negro. Like yeah. Bagger Vance or. Bagger, uh, let, yeah. It was, that was magical Negro, the movie. Bagger Vance. That was, or, uh, or even, um, because he was uh, literally a magical Negro in that film, which uh, I believe. Yeah. Ex- exactly. Or um, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the movie, the most famous one, the prison film. Um, oh, The with, Green with Mile. Morgan Freeman. Oh, yeah. oh, the, the, Shawshank. Morgan Freeman. the Shawshank. Yeah, Shawshank. But he was even Green Mile, though. So. Yeah. yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you see where this ties together. Yeah, I'll help oh, the black people. Or I'll help the white people because we it need was, all yeah. the help we can get, folks. It was, it was great. Filled with a lot of, lot of you know, uh, kind of black comedians cool. that, that I recognize. Yeah. See. But yeah, go see this. It was, it's definitely, nice. worth, definitely, definitely worth your while. Yeah, well, good. Definitely a smaller yeah. film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that gets us the heck out of the Geek Easy. Uh, they spit in our drinks again, Todd, so we're out of here. Don't know why they keep letting us back in, but that's their problem, not ours. Um, I got to get out my Air Qantas app because it's time to get down to the land down under. Hologram Tina and those fantastic mutants are waiting for us to talk about X-Men, the animated series. Let's do it. Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome! <laughs> Thank you, Tina. The mutants have been gathered for a topic or game to be entertained. And this week, we're doing a little bit of a primer uh, background on X-Men, the animated series. Just to give you just, a little bit of background. Just a, just a coat of primer. There yeah, we go. Coat, just before you coat the walls. Right. Um, essentially, the X-Men 97 is coming out uh, next week. So yes. we thought it'd be a good time to check in on, you know, the series uh, and, you know, just get a feel for it since it's been many years since a lot of us have watched it. But it's all on Disney Plus now. Right. Um, and we're going to talk about five specific episodes um and uh we will i will give you the overview of the series so the series uh debuted 
in do, 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 October 19, 31st, 1992. 1992, yes. Correct. And it went to September 20th, 1997. Oh, okay. um, at that point, uh, I was a junior in high school. Uh, no, actually, I've been a senior because it would have right. been my senior senior year fall. So, yeah, I was a little bit older when this happened. So, you know, I right. did watch some of it, but I was busy on Saturday mornings when this was debuting. So I really didn't get a chance to watch it. Then I went to college. So, yeah. Um, so this I, was I didn't the, get a, this yeah. was a literal Saturday morning cartoon a la the, uh, the Saturday morning cartoons of our youth a decade earlier. So correct I, on Fox I, Kids. Yeah, yep. I know that my, uh, my my buddy Derek, who's my figure collecting partner, who I mentioned earlier, this is a big big show for him because he oh, sure. was he was that age uh, when this was on. So I think this was a this was a because right, when it comes to collecting, he does a lot of the X Men stuff, and I don't because he loved the show so much. Yeah. Um, and, and for a lot of people, I did watch it because it was the only X-Men thing I could see beyond like Generation X and like oh, and things like classic. that. That were not that were not very good. And we didn't, you know, you, you know, the X-Men would show up and like a Spider-Man and his amazing friends. And then we got right. a uh, a one episode pilot back in the day in 1989 called Pride of the X-Men, which uh, loosely then the video game of the X-Men beat him up arcade game came out. And I liked oh. the Pride of the X-Men quite a bit, but they did some weird things making like Wolverine Australian didn't make any sense. And Dazzler was in it. So there you go. X-Men uh, Wolverine is an Australian that came from Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Their one appearance in that. That yeah, was the origin weird. of that. Yeah. Very, and, exactly. And, and, and they, they decided and to just keep going with it. <laughs> fire, yeah. Firestall calls Magneto Magneto in that too. Yeah. In, in a recap. So it's just, yeah, not, not good X-Men representation back in the day. Yeah. So uh, it essentially got a 13 uh, episode order when they, they went back uh, a couple years later to finally get this in. Saban and her team picked this up. They're also the guys behind Power Rangers. Uh, so with that, uh, and the series did really, really well. Uh, it basically was recreating uh, Giant Size X Men with that team and going through multiple storylines through five seasons. Um, and it went for a total of seventy six episodes over wow. five seasons. Wow! Yeah, like I said, yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and it was kind of interesting because the voice talent was had some notable voice talent from you know past animated series, and yeah. they covered a lot of the basis of you know modern and, and old storylines. So, as a fan of the X Men, I appreciated that. Now the execution, uh, as Ex we know, American execution? animation, right. yeah, American animation <laughs> is hit and miss at best. It's usually cheap and doesn't look that good. So we'll get into that pieces, but that's what's known. You know, the show is known for really uh, being a lot of uh, kids' entryway into the X Men when they weren't going to the comic shop. So right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that is kind of where it's at. It's on Disney Plus, like we said, so you can watch all these episodes. Um, and we're going to now get into we watched five episodes. So we watched Days of Future Past, which was a two parter. Uh, it was in season one, episode 11 and 12. Then we did Time Fugitive, uh, one episode uh, one and two, which is two part again, season two, seven and eight. And then we watched Weapons, Weapon X, Lies, and Videotape, Season 4, <laughs> Episode 16. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes. Holy so cow. We'll kick, yeah, we'll kick it off with Days of Future Past. So Days of Future Past, as you know, it's based on the the, the comic book storyline. But they took some, uh, they took some, I guess. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. all your big players were with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, their 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 prime focus character was Bishop more than it was Wolverine. Yes. Um and one thing that I thought was exceptional about Bishop, and I don't know if this was introducing Bishop or if he had he had uh, appeared in previous episodes. And again, this is only episode eleven of a probably twenty episode season. I think it says yeah, it ran down. This was a uh, oh no, this was the season finale of the first season. So it, or, I think there or, was one episode. After yeah, that. you're right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because yeah, it ran. There were five seasons: thirteen, thirteen, nineteen, twenty-one, and then ten in the final season, according yeah. to this article. So the one thing that I loved about Bishop, whether he's introduced here or not, is that every time he spoke or had a pause, there was this great honky tonk harmonica music. I'm like that. I not understand. Is he a because, <laughs> what, because if I was looking down, I would thought, oh, Bishop must be, or, or excuse me, Gambit must be coming on the screen because he's a Cajun, right? It was, yeah, I don't, I don't know what Bishop's like 
uh, regional background was, was he like, was he from the South as well as he from Alabama? And that's why that, that harmonica I music makes going sense. For, like, the cow. I think they're trying to make him like a cowboy. Oh, and, like, was, like that. Because, type of, yeah. Uh, because he had yeah. a, he had a kerchief around his neck. I get it. Okay. He was and he's a mutant hunter. Cause that's the whole thing. You know, Bishop was, so he was one dog, of the mutant hunters. He was that's dog the bounty the hunter. M. Yeah. That's why he's got M on his, uh, his face. And in the comics, he was introduced, you know, right. To two thirties, two forties, I think two fifty, I think. Right, and because this, yeah, because he yeah. came from that future and where all mutes, all mutants had the brand on their face, could be like you're a mutant, psh, and it's sticking over. Yeah, your but eyeball. he was not part of the original days of future's past. No, right? no, yeah, yeah, because that was yeah. in that was I think one early eighties, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, exa- very early eighties, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I and that is to me one of the most iconic print X Men stories because that's that's Claremont Burn, um, you know, uh, just. Close, well, probably right or not uh, closer to the midpoint of of the seventeen run that seventeen year run that Claremont had doing X Men, but I, I think certainly one of the finest in uh, the adaptation of that is my favorite X Men film. It's iconic, yeah, yeah, it is. But I, I wouldn't say that this was an iconic adaptation. <laughs> well, I mean, they did change some things up because the whole thing right. was uh, Bishop then finds out you know he's he's running up mutants to earn cash and and then when gotta, he's ca- gotta catch them all, quota, they're like, they're like he's, Pokemon. He's, he he basically had done up his quota and they basically said and then the sentinels then say oh we no longer need you so they go after uh they go after bishop as well so bishop oh decides, my oh, gosh you guys are too bad so they do um, have they do have uh capped commissions if you're a uh if exactly. you're a, if you're basically a salesman of uh capturing mutants you, if yeah, you, you're not hunter. yeah boy yeah. they wouldn't I, so yeah he just exceeded all his forecasts and then just said that's a bad thing to happen in sales. Yeah, you already that's capped out your bonus, you know, and then we yeah. don't need you anymore because, you know, that we've tapped out that region. Um, yeah. So then, and then when they, they go back to the base and they find out, oh, uh, the reason this all happened was because uh, the, the bad future where all mutants were dead and everything like that is because an assassination happened where the mutants were uh, blamed for it and then the right. Sentinel program went forward. And, and that's, and yeah, that's what, out, yeah. what happens in every adaptation. But when they get to the end of it, they find out that it's, it's like pulling on threads of a tapestry right they they think hey we've solved it and i'm not jumping am i jumping ahead into the next one well well yeah that goes in the next one but um that goes in the next one Sorry. I, I think before we do that you know we, we should give it a little bit of flavor the reason why bishop goes back is because you know wolverine takes them back and forges there they create a time bracelet right and <laughs> so bishop basically said hey old man you can't do this he pushes wolverine out of the way and bishop goes back so of course it's, uh, it's the it's the flipperoo uh, he's, and then he goes he's, back. The, he's the cowboy <clears throat> exactly so it, it's funny because when they when they run in so bishop it's kind of then gets the brain fog. He doesn't know like, Oh, I don't know who does it. And I can't remember anything. And, and then of course you get it's, the it's like, who, like, like quantum leap. Remember how Sam would hit a Swiss cheese brain. He couldn't remember stuff. Exactly. Stuff? Yeah. yeah. And they, they face each other. They, 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 they finally team up to stop it and they don't know exactly what's happened. And then we find out, Oh, it's secretly mystique is masquerading as gambit to kill. Um, Senator yeah. Kelly, Senator Kelly, yep. and yeah, so that things happen. You're making yes. you're making it you're making it sound like X Men Mad Libs to to kill. Give me a name, yes. <laughs> and then give me give me a place, and yep. give me uh, give me a give me a noun and a verb uh, transitive. <laughs> <laughs> exactly and then we get some like weird people we get like uh a, you know Creed and creed which is essentially the dad of of saber tooth is involved the, the friends of humanity is an organization let's take up you know let's take out mutants so then Fom, it, friends of humanity <laughs> exactly so it's it's kind of crazy that this all happened yeah and they solve the mystery it was gambit was actually um he was actually blamed for the death of Senator Kelly in this. And actually with mistake mystique gets shown as the shapeshifter and then right. Story resolved. Uh, Bishop goes back and they find out actually it didn't solve anything. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. So, um, and it's in this that we, and I don't know if this previously, previously established, but in the comics, Mystique is actually the mother of Nightcrawler. But in this, she's the, also the mother of Rogue, or is that a big fake out? No, she was. That was part of the comics too. Like she oh, raised okay, Rogue, right. and right, that's right. why she was part of the the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and all that. That's, I got it. Ran into remember when she took on the Avengers and got Mystique. Oh right, yeah. yeah, all right. And all then right. she became yeah. So um, 
I, I guess before we go on to the last up of the next episode, uh, Charlie, let's let's comment on a couple of things that were very funny. The fact that they would go out, the X Men would go out in this like Jubilee kept them breaking your damn CD player. Got to so go to the mall. Have to get next, had to go to the mall. Um, and the funny part about it was when they would go to the mall, everybody in the the X Men team, like Gambit, would just go out. In his in, trench coat and his in, uniform. Right, exactly. There's Why? no, yeah, and Jubilee and her, you know, in her yellow, it's funny because Jubilee is, a, and April hasn't done it in years, but had the whole Jubilee outfit as a cosplay and it didn't fit anymore because my wife lost one of the worst around. costumes of all but time. But it is, it's just a yellow, like, shrink and yeah. like those terrible pink, like, like old guy glasses and then uh, the headphones. And then a disc she's Robin man, right? Sparkles, Charlie from. Uh, <laughs> Let's go Robin to Sparkles. the mall. Yeah, I love that. It's it's very much like in Star Wars or in The Simpsons, where anyone only has one outfit. Or in the case of Star Wars, you get one outfit per film. Uh, and well, then animation and then budget, yeah. yeah, keep that animated. Well, although Storm did get to wear like she got to dress up. Yeah, every once in a while. you know, and that's it. Actually, it's it's furthered because in Star Wars Rebels, uh, anytime you saw one of the Imperial officers, they had the caps pulled down real t- uh, tight because they didn't want to make faces for every one of the Imperials. So that's, that's the truth. That's the real. That's, yeah, that's why all of them basically have kind of. And again, it's a cowboy look, right? You got the that brim right over the eye, so they yeah they they can all look alike. Tisk yeah. tisk yeah. tisk. So yeah. um so, yeah. I, you know, and someone recommended these episodes uh, to me. And I don't know if I would have picked these ones again because it was a lot of the same themes. It was like, oh, we're going back to the future again. Yeah, uh, I thought that was weird. Again. And it was another two part. So, yeah, in the new, uh, the next one is, yeah, it's the time fugitive. Uh, and now we're into season two and seven and eight. So, again, it's it's closer to the end of that season. And now we have, I don't know if this is the, I was trying to click on these links here to see if this was the first appearance of Cable uh, in the series. Uh, Cable was actually in a previous episode uh, season. No one remembered him, though. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Yeah, so exactly. so they had, but this had to do with the legacy virus, which was a storyline in the late 80s, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in the X-Men Correct. titles. Correct, yeah. It, it, yeah, <laughs> Colossus, uh, actually, his his sister died. Uh, Lanya died oh, of yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. legacy virus Magic, that she was brought right. back. But yeah, and there was also another techno-organic virus that C- Cable has as well, and that's why he gets sent to the future. So this is kind of a mix of both. Um but yeah, the virus that was going to kill uh, kill humans spread by mutants. It was a it was a ploy by um, well, who was it a ploy by, Charlie? Uh, I forgot. Who's it a ploy by? Apocalypse. Oh my goodness! You know you can never tell by the guy's name that he uh, is the original mutant bad guy. Yeah, we didn't really get Magneto anywhere in any of this. Which you know you think of the X Men, no. you think of you know well, he's the dude because he was um you know he was obviously the original X Men villain. But well, nobody... he's in the he's in the the first couple of episodes. Like I watched the first three episodes. I, yeah. of the season just to get myself up to speed and Magneto's I think, heavily I think, involved. Yeah, in this. I think I did too five years ago when disney plus came out and i'm like no yeah. this is no good because the anime yeah and i i was messaging you when i was watching this i'm like this animation is this rough dude this oh, really it's it, yeah it's it's very tough to watch it's, but it, yeah the quality of like the video too like the transfer it's just kind of not good it, you right. know obviously old video or, or old animation it doesn't it looks muddy in a they lot of ways really, yeah they can't really crisp it up so yeah um but yeah the legacy virus uh again that was um that was kind of a misnomer because in the public like oh the mutants are getting because every time oh this mutant gave me the whatever and i love how throughout all of these people kept saying mutants go back where you came from and i'm like where is that uh grand Rapids, mutant Michigan? Island. yeah exactly <laughs> because the whole thing Bubble about mutants, island yeah, Bablo Island. There, oh no, actually, it's Zug Island. That's the place where all the. This is what my ex wife told me. He was a native Detroiter. Uh, Zug Island, which is right next to where they're building the new Gordie Howe International Bridge that goes over to Canada, uh, is um, right in that River Rouge plant manufacture mm. area. And Zug Island is. She said that's where all the mutants are. So Zug Island is where mutants come from there i just solved it for you and sorry to any sorry to any of our listeners who live in southwest detroit i apologize but that's that's just what i heard from my ex-wife yeah so we do have this hysteria like uh and we find out like Creed creed who who's trying to you know get people against mutants we find out that he's so against them because um his son of course um, it's always the son yeah exactly uh so we, we we essentially have uh cable is now kind of 
it's kind of coming back in, uh, replacing uh, Bishop in this sense because yeah. he goes back in time to stop this from happening because his future sucks. His his child Tyler gets sucked away, right? Just like yeah, and, and get just like in uh, Deadpool two because you know there was Josh Brolin is was Cable in that film and there was his whole yep. driving force as he went back to kill uh, the the wildebeest kid. What's that kid's name? Who was the pyro in that movie? The, oh, the the Kiwi kid. Uh, what's it? he was in some name called the uh, oh. drawing a blank. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I know yeah. You know who I'm about. talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the prison pocket boy. <laughs> yes. So so um, essentially, cable. You know, it's one of those things where it's it's kind of a silly misunderstanding because they cable and Bishop tr- trying to kill each other uh, because they don't want either of their futures to die and they're they're at e- each other's throats. And yeah. we are essentially getting a lot of the same story beats of the. And yeah. I always felt like there was footage that was yeah. also reused from uh, the, yeah. the the previous two parter. That's that's how you can save that money. <clears throat> yeah. Oh my um, goodness. So yeah. So I like the solve of this is essentially the legacy virus, which they have to stop because if they don't, like it will cause the deaths of like millions and millions of billions of people. And I um, I, do, I do love getting the virus. How you then automatically tear your shirt open so that yes. someone can see the little dits and dots, like like a tattoo growing on your. But it's not even growing. You just hat when you just because again you just pull your shirt open and, and they don't show any women it's doing like it. like when Instead, somebody draws safe. measles on their body to show that they're sick. No, oh, I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> I have the shingles. Here, look. <laughs> um, so we do get the, the solve of this episode was that Cable figured it out. He goes, oh, I know what to do. So we're going to go through all the scenario, replay them taking on Apocalypse. But what they have to do is essentially get Wolverine falling into a vat of the virus so he can fight like, it off and then like, they use the antibodies to like save Joker. Everybody. Yeah, or they yeah, exactly. did. Uh, yeah, or, you know, the same way that you're like, oh, did you have COVID-19? Now we need to get your blood and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. So that was the solve. And then Cable goes back to his past and son's there and Bishop does too. He solved it. And, and I like that we get hippie Forge, you know, old, old, old man Forge. And involved. Forge's only yeah. ability is that he's he's got a, he's got a fake leg. And isn't he like super smart? Isn't that basically his Oh, goal? yeah. He is a, he, he basically stuff? can build anything. That is like right. his ability. So, right. um, yeah. And he, uh, which yeah, is not so. a super great like combat ability because you no remember fool. that and like uh, 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 Cypher, how his uh, his abil- his uh, mutant ability was languages. I'm like, well, how Language. useless is this dude? Don't even Charlie, give him a, don't Charlie, even give him a yellow a, uniform. Charlie, we've all been hurt by words. <laughs> oh, 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 that's so sad. Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah, it'll make you cry. Word, words hurt. He's going to come up with words and languages yeah, so, that, that don't even exist. <laughs> yeah, the funny part about this is when either of them, either when Cable or Bishop both use their weapons, either they are super powerful or they do nothing. It's yeah. like, woo, woo, you know, like little, little pistols. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. And, right. Exactly. You it's never a, know. You never know what you're going to get with that, that weapon. It's, it's um, a, it's a big pew, pew. Watch out, watch yeah. out for the big pew, pew. Oh yeah. man. Well, and I, I liked one of the phrases that cable used. He like, he like teleported through a phone line into a phone booth and he says, reach out and touch someone. I'm like, who is going to get that reference from like 1982? That reach was a bad one. To reach out and touch someone. It's an, what, AT&T? You, you, you could have just said ET phone home and it would have been more exactly. topical. Oh, my God. It's very topical. Yeah. And, and yeah, or he could have said, and long distance calls are free after 8 p.m. and on weekends. <laughs> Yeah, call uh, was at the MCI. Call MCI or the the one eight hundred call ATT. Oh my God! Remember we remember and we had uh, we had prepaid calling cards uh, when oh, we were yeah. in college. Yep, got to do that so you can make those yeah. long distance calls. Kids today don't even have any idea what that. Don't even know nope. anything except calls are free, Charlie. Phone yeah, calls well, are free. I was going to say the area codes are irrelevant. You know, you know, there's no yeah. such thing as a seven digit phone number. But anyway, listen to this old guys going on. All right, last installment. I did actually pull up a summary uh which is have here so yes the uh uh less one is a uh, weapon x lies and videotape based uh and what a weird reference because that was like an oh, indie film from the from the 80s called sex lies and videotape which exactly looked, I, think, I like the yeah, title yeah. i think laura san giacomo was in then she was the star of the just shoot me 
Uh, yeah. yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's all I know her from. Oh, and she was, she was Julia Roberts, fellow prostitute friend in uh, pretty woman. There you go. That's her resume. Yay. Uh, yes. But the episode, this episode loosely based on the storylines, the Shiva scenario, part one dreams of gore phase one slash part two dreams of gore face. Okay. Oh my, oh, this seems really, Oh, from uh, Wolverine issues, 48, to 50 yeah. from uh, yeah mm-hmm. which were uh, written by Larry Hama and Mark by uh, an art by Mark Silvestri so two super great creators yep. Mark, ha- Mark Larry Hama I'm a huge fan of he's the guy who created G.I. Joe Real American Hero uh, they were all, uh, there was also a bit of the storylines from Nightmare Quest Reunion Bastions of Glory and what goes around from issue 61 through 64 thrown in so this was really just just all Wolverine uh, the yes. robot the robot Talos is called Shiva here in Weapon X Project has more members. These issues were written by Larry Heyman, uh, art by Mex, uh, Mark Textiera. Well, so nice pedigree uh, from the uh, obviously from the source material, but uh, yeah, what hoes are Hollywood? <laughs> I, love your, I love your breakdown. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was the only standalone episode we watched, and like you said, the previous two were basically the same story twice. Uh, it kind of was, in, yeah, in a lot of yeah, ways. Yeah, it's kind of like, oh, going back and forth for the, through history, you're never going to change anything. So. Yeah, exactly. Butterfly effect happens. Yeah, yeah this that, one was yeah. yeah, this one was kind of cool. It's about weapon. It was Wolverine's old team Weapon X from Canada, where, you know, that's where Wolverine was given his enhancements. There was a team of uh, Sabretooth, uh, Maverick. Um, you Maverick, have so Fox. Tom Cruise. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and Maverick was uh, like German, I think. So he had kind of a weird accent and Silver Hawk was, or Silver Fox was his, his, his girlfriend. At right. The time. And that was the, the, yeah. the big image I remember when he drove away in the end, there was a tree that had bit and it was gigantic was written yeah. Logan plus Silver Fox, which Silver is weird because Logan is his name, but it wasn't her name. Kayla Silver Fox. Cause that was part of the, um, the X-Men origins film, which we're going to be talking about, uh, in a future Thunderdome as we ramp up to Deadpool. Um, um, that was uh, the female lead in the X Men Origins film, so I thought same character, Correct. right? Yeah, there you go. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Same same character, but this one actually was a, a superhero uh, yeah. or a team. She had the ability to heal and not age. That she was did, her. Mutant she ability. didn't have yeah. And her mutant ability in that movie was she could make somebody do what they say as long as she was touching them. Like I think you should pee in that snowbank. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. But hold yeah, on, we're all doing ability. it. Yeah, Maverick had the ability of uh, he had Ma- the ability to absorb Maverick, uh, absorb like weapon blasts and things like that. Uh, so, how does that make yeah. him? A, how does that make him a Maverick? I'm a Maverick. Shoot no, me. No. Yeah, I don't he get it. Things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Maverick was the old uh, what the old uh, TV show, and it was also a um, it was a movie. Uh, yeah, with uh, with yeah. Uh, your uh, your boy. Uh, from the Rockford Files, your dad's favorite show, uh, yeah, James exactly. uh, James what's his ass, the old guy, because yep. it was young and it was, and then Mel Gibson from Rockford Files, from Rockford Files, yeah, James Garner. So this is essentially <laughs> this is all covering Weapon X, which you know that originally we found out Wolverine's origin story, where he essentially was a mutant, uh, experimented on, injected with adamantium, uh, and then snuck away and basically Alpha Flight found him. Alpha Flight, beast. good stuff. Yeah. Yes. And they, they basically, re- res- you know, basically turned him back into a man. There and you go. Uh, but there was adventures with Weapon X where he was captured with the team. They went on missions together, similar to X Men Origins. As yeah, we yeah. Saw. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. this is this is getting the team back together because they're all experiencing uh, horrible flashbacks and memories. It's, right. it's incapacitating them. Wolverine's out of control, so Wolverine decides to go back where all of this happened. The Alkali Lake in- or whatever. That, that's what exactly. Called the movies, yeah. Yeah, but Beast follows him and helps him out through this and essentially find out that all of their memories are implanted, uh, that none of these things ever happened. We find out Sabretooth. We get to go back to his dad. Was it Hezekiah <laughs> Creed? <laughs> The, the names just get worse the further back they go. Like and Chris, with in arms, arms wide right open, he was Amish. <laughs> Amish Wolverine, schnicked. <laughs> and he was going to kill him with a pitchfork because he was yes. a bad, he, his, his son was the devil. And he, they, sent um, him out, they sent him out on that, rum, was that Rumskaya, and he never came back. Went off exactly. And joined the Canadian yeah. circus. And Wolverine, you know, had a relationship with Silver Fox up in a cabin. No, oh boy, just like in the movie. It was all... 
Yeah, it was all a lie, and then yeah, I forgot right. what Mavericks was. I can't remember that. He was just absorbing stuff it. and going highway to the danger zone. Oh, wrong. Mavericks. I did look up more about Maverick because I couldn't remember. Man, <laughs> not exactly a great ending to that dude's story. Oh. Kind of sad. Did he absorb? Did he t- have one rock and roll too many? And, yeah, pretty uh, much. Yeah, yeah. Oh. kind of a kind of a. a a forgettable character, but oh, yeah. Right. So essentially, we get uh, all of these, uh, all of the team kind of team up again. They take on this robot, which is robot not exactly. It kind of looked like Silver Samurai. <laughs> ah, come on! All the, that's how they made all these movies. They pulled everything yes. uh, from this show. It's all the same source material. And then did Wolverine lose his claws? And then they were bone claws or one side? Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh my yeah, goodness. So, uh, and then when they look at the, you know, that the, the, where they're at this uh, this facility, and essentially they'd recreated almost like Truman Show, like where they're had, and, <laughs> and Wolverine calls it Hoser Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Yeah, because they're Canadian. Stuff. Yeah, I get it. Because and all, that's what all. Wow. I we've yeah. known Mark for several years, and he's never said Hoser. So I, I think he never he has. He never I, I, I talked at, talked about wearing a, a toque. Yeah. You know? I think I think maybe a lot of it is just a, it's a lot of cultural bias. Ever seen him eat poutine on the show? Open, open, open your mind. Open your mind. Don't don't listen to stereotypes. Well, so that's uh, so we're getting X Men ninety seven in. Uh, that's this week. That that this is where we're dropping on Tuesday right. and this next the 20th. on Wednesday. Yeah, exactly. So well, good deal. Um, and is it relevant maybe to direct our listeners to watch like the last couple of episodes of maybe the series? Well, it's um, a direct continuation so yeah i would say if you want to see where this ended you know probably watch the last episode at least to see you know yeah. where it stood where the character's at because yeah this is not like a remake a reboot or like a 10 years later this is essentially picking up right after that last episode right. yeah so if you yeah. look at uh yeah i was looking to see if there's a summary of the last episode um let's see here just just for the name of the last episode is graduation day which aired in 1997 i'll just i'll give you a quick summary uh mute at a mutant human relations summit henry peter gyrich oh he's always such a bad guy attacks and cripples professor x with an energy weapon the x-men and Moira mctaggart uh try to save him but all seems lost landra Comes and has a cure, but Professor X must go with her to the Shi'ar Empire. So this is right from the comics. I recognize all this. Meanwhile, Magneto makes a final preparations to take over the world with his mutant army. But on the eve uh, of the invasion, Cyclops, Wolverine, and Jean Grey infiltrate Geonosia. Man, they're packing all of it in in this oh, episode. Yeah. Uh, to tell Magneto that Xavier is dying, he halts the assault on humankind out of respect for his greatest enemy, equal and only friend. The final scene of the show shows uh, depicts a lasting monument as all the X-Men and Mingo stand outside the X-Men mansion and say goodbye to Xavier as he leaves with Alandra and her ship to the Shi'ar homeworld. So he doesn't die per se, but the trailer that we saw made it look like he was dead. So it's a fake out, like he's really, he goes to space. Oh, Charlie, you know, every you, you, Charlie, everybody who dies in comics stays dead. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Right. Exactly correct. So um, he, he is Poochie. Yeah. He had to return to his home yeah, planet. Exactly. Kind of like that. <laughs> Um, I will say that uh, I, I shared the most recent trailer for X Men ninety seven. Yeah, and definitely I can say the animation is significantly better. Head and it shoulders, looks really good. Yeah, head and shoulders, very good stuff. So, so I'm looking forward to it. So, do we know? Are we getting a straight up drop, or is this a weekly deal? I can't remember. I believe it's a weekly deal, and it's okay. like eight to ten episodes. And they're cover- they talked right. about what they're going to cover, and there's going to be some cool uh, stories they're going to cover. And I'm assuming that they're going to adapt yep. some of the more modern storylines, right. even though maybe it was we'll 97 then. They can the, capture other things. Maybe they'll get the Hellfire and the, the, the uh, Krakoa, some of the stuff that we were Extinction talking about. Agenda. They could yeah. do Death of the Mutants. They could do um, oh, yeah, yeah, Fall uh, of Mutants, yeah. Age of Apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah, El- Age of El- El- Apocalypse. Well, cool. Well, I'm Sorry, looking El- forward to it. So this this was this was a fun uh, walk down memory lane for memories that I never had because I never watched this show. So, um, but I'm more but I'm more excited for the new one. So good deal. All right. Well, that is a wrap on the program. So friends, as always, thank you for joining us, Todd. Where do people find you out there? Uh, they can find me on Twitter at T Oxtra, also uh, and Threads, uh, and at Secret Friends Unite on Threads at. Secret Friends You on Twitter. 
You got all that. Uh, I am a C3 Carpenter on threads and Instagram. Uh, I stay busy on our Secret Friends Discord. That is the friendliest corner of Discord, I've decided. That's what I decided to call it. Uh, but I spend a decent amount of my time running the USS Grand Petoskey with my wife, April. That is one of the biggest chapters of the International Star Trek Fan Club in the world. We are based here in West Michigan, uh, but we've got chapters all over Michigan. I'm also very privileged to run Region 13, which encompasses Michigan and Eastern Canada. If you're a trekker within the sound of my voice, please visit sfi.org. Drop us a note or USS Grand Petoskey. Husky.com. I would love to help connect you with Trekkers where you are. So with that, friends, one more time, thank you for joining us. I'm going to tell you that sharing is caring and to keep on trucking. Be the hero, not the villain. In a truck. Back off, rookie. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server, or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.